But in the run up to Isle Expo, we've been talking to local entrepreneurs who will be sharing some of their experiences at this month's event to inspire, well, to inspire really the next generation of business owners. And today's guest is Mary Beth Cole, a co-founder of the winery and bar located in Port Heron called Foraging Vintners. Uh, Mary Beth, I'm really curious as to how this whole venture came about. Well, it was sort of um, funny. It's our plan B. So my husband and I were living on the island. We came to the island because it made sense for tax reasons for Ian because he was working in Brazil at the time and we were living in the U.S. And the plan was just to be here for 18 months to two years and then move back. And um, we came to the island. We made it through the first winter. And (laughs) um, after that, we just sort of fell in love with the place. And there's a lot of it's sort of the, the close-knit community. There's lots of little elements that is very attractive about the island when you're used to living in big cities and um, bigger places. But, uh, yeah, we, we just sort of came and came sort of settling in and met lots of people. And then we started renovating a property here. And then we just sort of were making long-term plans where we're like, all right, well, maybe we can spend some time here and sometimes back in Colorado. And then the oil industry kind of took a dive. And that's when we sort of set sort of looked at each other and said you know what you've been doing this for almost 20 years now let's um, spend some time together so we were so when we moved here we quickly realized the winters are long and we needed a hobby so we were making wine in our garden shed it was affectionately known as the little wooden pub and neighbors would call us and say hey is the little wooden pub open and we're like yeah come around we'll open it up and um, but that's where it kind of started from so people were enjoying the booze we were making and that's when we said well hey maybe let's see if we can make a thing out of this so um yeah we started making business plans and looking around and sort of took our little you know our little garden shed um enterprise and to to make it into something bigger and with regard to to the whole business section i suppose have you got any previous experience with growing your own business well um i'm a lawyer and ian worked on oil rigs and um prior to that we we're both sort of ian was in the army and i was in a corporate bank so we for ourselves no we were very good with helping other businesses help you know grow and, and whatnot but um so yeah we were t- completely green and uh being here is actually a very good uh, environment for someone who has no experience doing it to give it a shot um, because the government has a lot of help. The people on the island give you a lot of help. Other local businesses are willing to like sit down and sort of tell, the, share their story, um, tell you what works, doesn't work. Um, and I'm not sure if that goes. I, I don't know. I, I've lived in a lot of places, and I'm not sure that works everywhere you go. But here it's just there's a, a real community feeling and spirit, and it's just so refreshing. And that's really interesting because the theme of this year's Isle Expo is location. And, and as somebody who, who is, has been new to the island, you can really give your insight into that and the support that's available over here. Because we, we keep saying this, Chrissy, don't we? It just seems to be a, a hotbed uh, for new companies in all sorts of sectors to grow. Well, yeah, definitely. And, that, and that's the thing we were talking about this this off air as well. All sectors and also for people of all ages as well, because you've got, you know, sort of people in their early 20s setting up businesses, um, some of whom I know Mary Bethany and work with, because she said is, you know, collaborating, not competing and, and working with these people. And also, you know, people can start up businesses at any age. You're saying yourself, you know, you and Ian have already been working for quite some time and you just decided, oh, I'm just going to start again. And you can, you've got the opportunity here, haven't you? Absolutely. And, and the government is very good at sort of, help if they see potential in what you're doing or um, that you're really committed to your idea and that you think you can make it work they're willing to work with you to get it started so we are the first working winery um, but was dedicated to wine and so we had to go through excise and all different varieties of government offices and their and their response to us like hey it's our first time dealing with this too so let's do it together and, you know, that's a, just a great sort of spirit that they, they're promoting. And, and from my point of view, if you're a business that's looking to locate here or looking to locate somewhere in Europe, this is a really good place just to check out because there's there are opportunities here still. Now, the thing that amazes me is that when we spoke to you last year, when I came up to Foraging Vintners, you, ju- you were just launching a new product. But since then, you've not only launched other new products, <laughs> but you've also you have events on all the time as well. And I, I wonder how you managed to fit all this in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we work. We're um, we're really lucky. We've sort of we have a great team and staff and, and 
lots of people with great ideas. And for us, having events, giving people reason to come down to Port Aaron is sort of key to sort of keeping people aware of what we're doing. And also, we, we need new we need new people to come in and taste our drinks and give us feedback and and sort of get excited about it <laughs> just raise my hand here you know as, as i said earlier anytime you need a volunteer yeah, yeah. book in <laughs> uh, but you know mary beth by its very nature this industry is exceedingly time consuming you know not only the, the long hours that you have to work you know dealing with the general public but also the creative side the ideas the making it all um and i, I wonder how much of that has surprised you maybe in some way Oh, absolutely. So it there's um we're in and are lucky because there's two of us, and I, I give credit to anyone who's doing it sort of on their own and just trying to take on the marketing and the paperwork and the selling and the manufacturing and all of that. So we kind of do a little divide and conquer of certain things, but yeah, that it is quite overwhelming. When your first year, it happened, and I have no idea. I didn't know that like October happened. <laughs> <laughs> just, apparently it did. I'll trust everybody that o- October existed. But yeah, you just get so um, caught up in just trying to keep it going and, and keep it fresh. And um, but yeah, that's part of owning your own business. It's your it's what you want to put out there and what you're willing to put into it. And working together, is it always a bed of roses? <laughs> well, so this is that's a great question because um, we spent we we've, we've been together about 20 years and most of that um he's been on oil rigs half the year so i only saw him half the time so really that works out to about 10 right but yeah working with him it's it i was a little bit i had a little bit of trepidation i'm not going to lie but um it's been great i get to see him every day and then like even on our worst day like we we had a forklift problem the forklift slipped and we had cages of wine on it we dropped 200 bottles crash boom bang everywhere middle of january freezing cold we had a private event in three hours and we had to clean it up we were just sort of like shaking from the loss and then um you know we got everything ready we got the private event on everybody was happy and then we went home but that was the best part i got to go home with him you know, and we oh. got to like kind of clean it up together and we just sort of got through it and we're just sort of like exhausted. But, you know, we just knew that we did it together and we just got through it and it's fine. And so, you're working with someone who truly understands then what you've been through and what sort of day you've had. Exactly. Exactly. Both of us are just like, oh, that was ready to get sold. <laughs> but, you know, it, it just it is what it is. But it's 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 one of those things. It's great to have somebody to have your back to be able to do all that. Um, speaking of events, you've got quite an exciting one coming up. Yes, yeah, so we're really excited. So it goes back to the Isle of Man being an incredible place to do business simply because all the other local businesses are supportive. So we had this young, incredible woman come up to us named Rowan Henthorne, and she's doing this trip called The Expedition. And it's an all-female crew, and they're sailing from Hawaii to Canada via the Great Pacific um, Garbage Patch. Now, it's really scary that that thing exists. But what they're doing is they're going to collect data and do research. And they're going to use that research to give to other universities so that people can sort of understand the effects of plastics in our ocean. And she came to us and said, hey, can I do a a little fundraiser event? And we're like, oh, yes, you can. So what we've done is we've called on all of our friends in the food and drink industry to sort of help donate items so that we can auction them off. Christy might even show up and help us auction items off, which will be brilliant. But we have, um, for the tickets are about £10, and you come, you get a free glass of FV Fizz. You get a, a slice of Hawaiian pizza provided by La Gusto Pizza, which is our great local pizzeria. And then we have DJ Alan Van and Spinning Tracks. And then in the middle of all that, we're going to have Roman give a chat, and then we're going to have this auction. And this auction is going to be incredible. So we have um, tattoos. We're auctioning off tattoos from Steadhead. She's an amazing tattoo artist. We have um, loads of local food and drink products, Meal for Two from 14 North, Apple Orphanage is donating, Manx Cider Company, Bottle Monkey. We've got loads of other little items that are going to get sold off. But the most interesting one is we're going to we're gonna get a local MHK to walk the plank and plunge into our processing tank. And he's he, it's been amazing that he's been willing to do it. But, yeah, we're really excited about that. I don't think we're going to reveal who that is no. at the moment. Um, but as Chris said before we came on air, I mean, do you want to, to ruin your tank in that way? <laughs> we can clean it. Okay. There's enough sanitizer. 
Um, the reason we're talking about t- this today, um, Mary Beth, is because Isle Expo is coming up in a couple of weeks. What exactly are you going to be doing there? So I'm going to be with uh, on a panel of other businesses that have located to the Isle of Man, and they're from all different ranges. Some are just massive funds, some are engineering companies, some are uh, our local friends, uh, Jamie Blair from Roots. Um, so it's it's a whole... It's a whole range of businesses, and we're going to just talk about how, um, what the government can do and the Isle of Man is like to locate your business here. Sounds brilliant. Lovely to have you with us this afternoon.